Hello, this is a video to walk you through the basics of Canva. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and before we continue, I want to say that I am not a Canva expert. I'm just sharing with you what I've learned through using it for a couple of years so that you have the basics so you can start creating your graphics um, for your events or I've even created a, a book cover with Canva. So that can be handy for those of you who have a book in them. Um, so here we go. Let's just get started. I'm going to share with you, oops, um, Canva right now. So this is what Canva looks like. Um, yours will probably be a lot more quiet than mine. Um, here is just my name. Here's to create a design. Um, I'm just going to try and put this in a place where it doesn't bother us. And this is, um, before I start, you have all these different kind of sizes, but you also have custom dimensions. And if you click on it, you'll be able to have a width and a height. And this is something that you can usually find out. Uh, for example, if you wanted to do a Facebook banner for your page, um, you can find that by Googling what is the current size of uh, that needed for a, a banner. Now, even though you might have some dimensions, it's always best to keep the design in the center and not go too much on the side and have some sort of leeway around the text that you're going to write to make sure that um, it has some, yeah, that, that you have um, some given and play with it. Once you've created the right size, um, suppose you were going to create events um, on Facebook, which is a good thing to do, even if it's an um, in-person event, uh, then I suggest that you name the design um, Facebook events so you can reuse it later. So let's create our first design together. I will show you how to do that. So you click on this little button, which should open a new page. Well, it doesn't. But, uh, oh, hang on a minute. Let's, let me just click on one of these. Let's say we're going to create a Facebook post. So you click on it. And it opens a new, I don't know if you've noticed my canvas here, and now I have a new page. So each design will be opened in a new tab when you, when you do this. I'm going to close the, oh, actually, no, I'm not going to close the Google one. I'll tell you why. So immediately this takes you to the templates. You see templates here? Here is a possibility to resize, but that's only for people who pay for Canva. So always make sure you have the right size before you make your design. Otherwise, you're going to have to redo it uh, from scratch. Okay. Um, so templates are here, and we're going to use um, a, a random one um, to create our, let's say we're going to create an event. What you want to focus really is not on the images, it's on the layout, okay? So this is a layout that I think is quite good because you can put, if it's an in-person event, where it's going to happen, and I'm going to create my own event. Whoopsie. When you make a mistake like that, like I've just made, it's easy. You click on that little arrow to put it back together. So the first thing I'm going to put is the information about my event. So I'm going to put Glaston, oops, Glaston Gray VIP retreat. Um, then it's going to be... Oh, what am I going to um, name it? Um, I'm going to make a writer's healing circle. And I'm going to put the dates in, which are September 16 to 19. It's almost like it was meant to be. <laughs> And we're going to say that it's going to be, well, it's, it's a sleepover. I'm going to put sleepover. I like that name later. So here I'm going to name it, but actually it has, um, it has named it, but it, it used the um, retreat. So I'm going to change the name of it. So here's, here's that. Um, 
no, the proceeds won't go to the hurricane victims. So we're going to just, um, but I'm going to put a three day immersion into the writing life. Let's put it like that, right? So then now I'm going to change um, the background image. Um, so I know, I hope you've noticed where I've clicked to change the title, it's fairly simple. And then to change the image, you have to click on it until you can, um, once you've clicked on it, you can try and delete it with your delete button. And that's, that's done the job. So now I'm going to look for an image that I can put as a background. And I'm going to go into the downloads, the uploads here, sorry. Now, I don't know if I have the image that I want. Um, if not, I know where to find one because I've been thinking about it for a while. So no, I don't. So as you can see, you have at the top this little upload image. And I think in my desktop, I already have my Glastonbury retreat. That's right, and I have an image here. So when it uploads, um, you see here, there's a little bubble. When it's finished, make sure you, you wait until the end, otherwise you, it will mess things up. Now it's finished. I can literally just drag and drop it and look at it. Obviously, I now need to change the color of the font and everything else because it doesn't stand out enough. And I'm going to go, I'm gonna look, uh, oh no, I don't wanna do that. Um, how do I get out of here? Maybe later. Um, let's go back here. So we want to go into the palettes. I thought I would be able to... All right, I'm just going to have a look. I want to have a very, very dark green for that. A bit darker. That looks good to me. <coughs> so I'm going to stick with that. And now all I need to do, because I've got it here, I've just used it, so I should be able to highlight here Go into the colors, it's here, and use that same green. By the way, that's um, painting I did myself, so I'm quite proud of them. Probably should be a tiny bit darker, but that gives you an idea. Okay. Here we go. So I have my, my flyer, so to speak. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to download it. I'm going to show you how to download it. So what you do is you, hang on, I want to drag this somewhere else. Uh, that should probably go here. You look at this click button. Now, as when you use a template, I don't recommend that you change the size of the fonts or anything because it's in a grid and it's gonna mess up everything. So if you find that you don't really like the design, then feel free to create another page. So you can create another page here. Here is if you want to duplicate it and change something slightly. So you're not exactly sure of the color, but you don't want to mess your first design because you quite like it. So you go here, for example, and say, okay, I'm going to try with black because this is not um, clear enough. And then you can compare the two versions. So let's have it like that. And sorry, I don't want to take too long, but you get the idea. Um, so then you can have a quick look and yeah, that one's more crisp. Um, but I might want to try and do a white one with white writing and see how that stands out. So these are your options and I can see immediately it's much better in black. So I'm going to try the white one now. So all you need to do is duplicate, but if you wanted to um, create a completely different page, with a different design, what you would do is you would go, I'll show you now. Um, that's, I, I really like white writing usually, but it doesn't stand out enough in my, in my view. Let's have a quick look. Uh, see, this is softer. I like it better but it might not be the idea. And you know, I've just noticed something, the retreat's gonna happen here. Can you see where my arrow is? I'm so excited about this. 
So now you have those three designs, you might want to download them and play with them, whatever. So how you download them is here. So you click on this little button and you have different formats you can download it. So if you were making a PDF, then you go for PDF, uh, PDF print. Um, well, I didn't know you could make animation. That's a new feature. And you have JPEG and you have PNG. It's recommended you use PNG because it's a high quality image. But if it's just for Facebook, I suppose you could go with a JPEG. It doesn't really matter that much. It's for printing stuff if you wanted to make like proper flyers. Once you've selected, um, you can select which page you want. Ooh, <laughs> I didn't expect that to happen. Uh, I'm going to select page two because that's the one that stands out the most. So what you, what you do is that you select here, you say done, but you're not done when you click done. And I've, I've, um, I've had this problem myself. And then you click download. Now, one of the tips that's important is that wait until it's completely downloaded and you see the thing jumping. Um, before you close Canva or move on to another window. I've made that mistake and um, it's a problem because then you're, it's not downloaded properly. So here we go, we have that image, then you can just um, take it from here. I know your computer might be different. Drag it into wherever you want. I'm gonna actually put it in my folder because I'm quite um, excited with this. Um, so that's how you create a graphic in Canva. Now, I haven't shown you all of the elements, so we're going to try something a bit different. Here you have elements, and that's where you can add hearts. You know, sometimes you might want in a design that it stands out, so you add um, like a shape. People do that often with a nice little background, and they have a shape, and then inside they put the whatever text. So we're going to move into text here. So if you wanted to click a text inside you can just do that and then you drag it can you see the little uh, cross arrow when you move it around when it's in the middle it'll tell you so this little uh, double um, well, quadruple arrow uh, you know that when you have it if you click you'll be able to drag and uh, to move things around same for um, and it used to be right on the in middle but now it's a little bit off center so just know that move your um, mouse a bit until you find the sweet spot where you know you can move things so i could put if i wanted to just a very retreat so that's the you've now seen the templates the elements the text even for the text suppose you had uh, i'm gonna take this out because i don't want to ruin my beautiful design I want to see beautiful. If you want to delete something, you have to find that that cross again, okay? And then um, you delete. And if you make a mistake, I think I've shown it before. You just play on that undo button, and you'll be able to um, to create something. So I'm going to play with another design. But I don't know why it's put. Um, oh yeah, it's because it was a template. If you have a template like this, so let's go in the uploads and find a different image. Let's put this one in. You can stretch the image to make it fit to your thing. You just pull the corners like that. So now I've got this image. It's strange as I, I wasn't able to do that yesterday either when I tried is that I wanted to move it more in the center because you can see this platform is a bit left, but I'm not able to do that. So as this is a demo, we're gonna keep things simple. So you see with your elements, oh, I wanna show you more. So I've seen this is just a flat one and you can change the color. So if you wanted it to blend a bit more with this and you wanted to have like a heart that's standing right above this, it's a bit corny, but I'm just trying to show you something interesting. So I can change the color a little bit. So it's more like, yeah, that looks better. Yeah, um, and I can keep it a little bit. So that's your shapes, yeah? Then here you have a stock of free photos. So all you need to do is to click here to see more. Um, so that could be a background photo because I've used some of my uploads, but you might want to use one from here. The only thing I will say about this is quite nice, but because everybody wants to use free photos in Canva, that means that you're probably going to use photos that a lot of the other people use. 
but you know i'm not sniffing it um there's quite a few you might find something that's perfect for what you want to say the choice of the image is actually really important you want you don't want to confuse people by using something that's completely random um keep it simple keep it um and if you want to associate your event with something you know um subliminally like maybe you were doing an event about um no, that's not subliminal. I was looking at the M, the feather for angels. Um, so that's your free photos. You also have graphics that you can get. Um, and if it's pay, um, you will have a price here. And suppose I was going to use this graphic in the middle. Um, I know it's completely random, but let's just suppose I wanted to use this. I can change the color. Until I pay, I will. Keep, there will be a watermark. So what will happen is uh, you will pay for this design when you download it. It says here premium image and then you'll have several options. You have one time use, multi use, extended use and you can see all different things like it's just a single design, all your designs um, and then extensive use. Okay. I bought one and, um, and it was a really good investment. Um, I think it was on the multi-use one. Uh, and once you pay for it, you will find it in your uploads because, um, hang on a minute. Oh, can't find it anymore. It used to be in uploads. Um, there was a um, different area. I don't know. I might have to ask someone who knows more about Canva. But this gives you the basics. So you have your elements. Um, how do I go back to the four elements thing? Maybe by closing this, that's right. So here you have grids. I want you to know about grids because they're amazing. So I'm gonna take that heart away. We're gonna look at the grids. Grids are really good when you wanna put a picture somewhere and you wanna be able to, um, hang on, it's not really pictures. Let's, let's create a new, page suppose you wanted to create <coughs> something that has two images in it you just click on it and it'll just fit here and then when you drag your photos in they will literally fit on the grid that you put them on so you see how how good this is immediately i have those two images and i can add whatever i want to it yeah that's a grid right and then you can still add text to it um, if I wanted to. It kind of falls right in the middle. And I'm just going to do some random thing. Bring more color in your life. Right? So now that we have this, we can play with the fonts and we can play with the size and everything. So I'm going to show you a little bit. You can pull on the side here to make it just one line. So the more you pull on the side, the more text can go in. I quite like the fact that it's only on one line. Now I'm going to center it. And once I've done that, I'm going to highlight it. Oopsie, no. I'm going to go back. Oh no. Let's do this again. <coughs> it's not always as it was. Can you click the wrong thing like I've just done? So let me just center this. That's it. Now, I find it, I will say, I find it sometimes a bit tricky to highlight things without messing things up. This is where you're going to find your different fonts. This is where you're going to find your different sizes. This is where you can change the color of your font. You can't always um, bold it. This is where you'll center it or go left alignment. I'm sure you know about this. This is more important for PDFs when you want to do a list. And spacing is quite important as well. Um, you can space the letters or the line height. So that's, that's a really cool option. Let's go into the fonts. So when you scroll down like this, you'll have so many different fonts. It's sometimes confusing. If you're completely new to design, I would say choose one and stick to it. I quite like the Baba's new Cyrillic because I like a nice square title. And now it looks a bit too small, so I'm gonna go into the sizes and play with it. Um, so this become a little bit my, my font um, because I speak to businesses. And, um, but if, I were, if my audience was 
more airy fairy, I could use something like, and I don't mean this in a bad way at all. Uh, I could use something more um, cursive, uh, like there's a really nice one. Let me just show you. But the thing is, I need to say this to you, you could spend all day playing with these things, okay? So um, set a timer before you get started so you don't completely, um, well, don't spend the whole day in there, all right? So I've shown you elements, you know about grids now, so we're gonna close the grids. Um, the other thing, well, we've seen shapes, um, you have charts, you have lines, and I want to show you frames because frames are really cool as well. So let's go into the frames. In the frames, I suppose you wanted to put your picture because it's kind of nice um, to put your picture in there so people know who you are, especially if they know you. Now there's different kinds of frames here. Um, there was one that used like a phone in case it was like an event, uh, an online event. I thought it was quite cool, but I haven't seen it lately. I don't use frames as often. <coughs> Maybe it's a paid feature. They even had one with a screen. Oh, like this one, let's put this one. I suppose I was doing an online event. I want people to understand that it's gonna be an online event. So I'm gonna use this little frame. Probably I should use another background. Yeah, I'm going to use another background. Um, mm -hmm, what would fit well behind this so that it doesn't look like too silly? Well, probably something doesn't, it's not too loud. I quite like this. Um, so I'm going to put it on here. It's just to show that it, it's better if you have a, a quiet background when you add these things. And that's really good because I can show you something else that you need to know. When you put the picture, you saw that it completely this, um, blanked out my frame. So I'm gonna go in position here and I'm gonna go backwards so that it goes behind the screen. Now I'm gonna center this so you can see if I move up and down. Once I've done that, I'm gonna put my face in it. So let's see if I have a, I'm gonna put Kermit, it's a fun one. What you see is when you drag and drop into a frame, it immediately centers it. So sometimes you have to go into a different design, use the photo to frame it because perhaps I, well, it's actually, it works quite well in this example. But suppose I was more to the left of the picture and so I, my face would be cut off here. What you do in that case, you go back to home or you open a new window in Canva you, and you resize your, the picture you're going to put in there. You download it, like I explained to you, with this little button, and then you re-upload it into Canva with you being in the center. So you can see I have quite a few pictures of ladies here because I do interviews with them. And so I've used that to reframe because very often people send me pictures where they're not in the center or like this with this lady. She was all, um, she was going to go into a really small frame and she would have looked minuscule. So I resized her picture and then reloaded it. And then when I dragged and dropped, as you can see, she looks really good. She's right in the center. I'm going to take her. Oh, I didn't think it was going to do that. So when you click on it, normally before I used to be able to just delete the picture, it's no big deal. I probably didn't click in the right place. So just be aware that you have to be a bit careful where you click. But in any case, you can always click this button to undo. So I think that's, uh, that's it for the frames. I, I find them really useful. You might have seen, you can even do them with letters. I was uh, looking at it earlier which can be really beautiful. If you have a nice um, sort of graphic and you wanna have a title that stands out with maybe a more quiet background, you can use those letters to, um, to create some pretty phenomenal things. I've used them myself in PDFs when I wanna do like one, two, three, I have a couple of points and I use these one uh, numbers to bring a bit of color and I play with the design. I don't want to do too much because I don't want to overwhelm you, but then you have also illustrations, icons, and at the bottom, 
Canva design. Um, text, as I said, you can use, um, let's take this out so we play a little bit with it as well. If you had like a quiet background like this and you just wanted to maybe create something. So here, again, it's a bit like with the pre-designs, do not play around with the fonts and everything because you're gonna create a nightmare for yourself. So really go for the stuff that you know, oh, yeah, it looks good, that's exactly the way I want it designed. If not, you play around yourself, okay? I'm just um, changing the color so it stands out so you see. So that's an example of a text that's pre-formatted. And so if you see something that looks good and that looks like something that fits your, uh, your purpose, uh, then use that design to create something unique. Yeah. Um, that's for the text. So uh, once you select a text, I think I've shown you before, you can select the font, the size, the color, and all that. I think we've covered most of um, Let me just see if there's anything else I need to. Um, uh, suppose you had done this and you want to use it on the next slide with a different background. You can either duplicate here, so you'll have two slides and you can. Um, you can work on the second one. But if it's just the, the text, you click on it. When you click on it, you can copy it. So it will duplicate it on your slide, on your image, and then you can drag it somewhere else if you wanted to. Okay? I'm not going to do that right now, but it's just to show you the possibilities. Uh, what else do you want to know? Um, position, we looked at it. It's quite, it speaks for itself. The transparency is really important. So let's go to the transparency. So I'll do a new design. Uh, <coughs> yeah, let's do this. So I've stretched my image. I'm going to center her a little bit more. And I actually want to create a banner. I don't know why. Let's, oh no, let's use an element. Uh, I've got some elements here. Let me see what element I could be using. That would be interesting. Let's use a star. So I've got my star here. Um, and I'm going to put. Let's say I wanted to just put um, the word shine in that star. So I'm going to drag it in the middle so you can see. You can do that. Um, um, let's see if it's right in the middle. That's the middle. It doesn't look right. So I'm going to put it like that. Okay. Now you have this and you think, like, oh my God, it stands that too much. I want it to be a bit more subtle. What you can do is when you click on the, uh, the image, you go in the transparency thing and you can fade it a bit so that it allows the word to shine, to stand out without it looking like it's um, placated into your picture. Does that make sense? So now I can even change the color slightly. So I might go for um, a, a subtle one. This is not a subtle pink. Let's see if I can make it more subtle. There. Uh, I don't like this design, but it's just to show you an example. And then you can um, you can change the color of the font. See if if you like it like that. I'd probably go for something more orangey. So, right here we go. So that's an example of how you can play with the fonts and the transparency button that I've showed you here. Okay. I find transparency is really, really good as well when you create sort of banners for your text. You know, suppose your, um, your image is quite dark and you want to be able to put some dark text on here. You don't want it to be white. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into elements, you're going to select a square, and you're going to squeeze that square into a banner, and you're going to stretch it to the sides, and this is where you're going to put your text. So um, let's say, I'm just gonna have this text here. Um, 
let's suppose I was doing a webinar on how to find your joy. <clears throat> Sorry, so I'm going to stretch it so that it's on one line. Then again, I'm going to center it. As you can see, this looks really awful. So if you go into the um, transparency, you can just go down, down, down until you find your sweet spot where you think, hmm, actually that works better. And then of course the actual shape, you can go for a gray, you can go for a black, you can go for anything you want. These are the set colors, so you know you're gonna be able to reuse them um, as many times as you want. You can also have the customs ones. And I think that's about it. Link here is if you create a PDF and you want to insert a link in the text. So you highlight and then you click link and then you add your link into it. I think the only thing I need to show you now is the spacing aspect in case you were making a PDF. And that means you can um, change the letter spacing. So as you can see, they're very spaced and then now they're tighter. Uh, I prefer a tighter, I find that they're too spaced, it really does me. And then we can see the line height, but if you had two lines, that mean, enables you to squeeze more things into things. And that's it really. I think um, I've given you a little kind of a basic, um, there's also the backgrounds, I never use them, but oh, actually they have some new ones, nice ones. Um, before it was just like lines, but now they have like images, I quite like that. So as you can see, you have all the colors of um, the rainbow. And these are, these are images that sit in the background. They're not too loud. And they, they allow you to have this text, text stand out instead of just, um, I'm actually going to try one of these. I like this one. So in, when you use your background, that can think about what the color conveys. And you can Google online what colors um, portray or you know, um, what kind of feeling. Usually blues are calming, yellows are energizing, um, orange is for creativity, uh, green is for healing. Um, so just kind of have a little thought about what kind of ambiance you want to convey, you know. If I was going to do a stress event uh, to help people relax uh, or work about around stress, I would probably use that sort of color. Uh, oh, I like that one. But it looks like this one is a pay one because it has that watermark and you, yeah, to remove the watermark, you have to pay. That's okay. It's still a lovely picture. But I would probably say before you pay for something, wait until you've played around quite a bit. And I, this is the one last thing I wanted to mention. There's a, a website called Pixabay that has some pretty, and there's other websites, but um, I'm going to just mention this one so you can get started. Um, hang on, I've lost my, I've lost my screen. I can't find my, uh, here we go. No, that's my image. Uh, I want to find here. There we go. Share again. So um, in Pixabay, everything's free, including for commercial use. So that's really, when I'm in a hurry and I want to add a pretty image to a post on Facebook that I'm making, I just try and think of keywords, and that's probably the trickiest thing to do is to find the right keywords. Um, so let's say I want to find images. Sometimes it, it doesn't work, but sometimes it does. Um, I want to find an image um, with children. So I'm just going to enter children, and here I have a whole different kind of images. I've used this one before. The children, um, when I was doing a giveaway um, to let people know who had won. Um, so once you've clicked on the image, ad, ad, underneath you'll get some paid images that you can buy from Shutterstock. And sometimes they're brilliant, but you could like spend a fortune just buying all these pictures. Um, normally, you also have, if there's another picture that's similar, you will have them here. But for some reason, oh, here, they're here. 
was going to say they're moved. All you want to do is click on the free, free download and here you select your size. Just go for the one that's pre-made unless you have something huge to make or whatever. Once you download, it's the usual um, capture thing with the traffic lights and various things. And um, let's do the vehicle thing. Um, and what's going to happen is once you finish doing that, I just want to one of these days where it wants to do. All right, all you need to do is download once you have it, save it somewhere in a folder, and then upload it in Canva. And here you go. I think you have the basics. If you have any questions, reach out to me. I'll be happy to answer if I have the answer. Um, this is just what I've learned over using Canva for two years. As I said, I'm not an expert, but um, I'm really happy to give you like a head start on it so you don't have to learn the hard way as I have. Thank you for watching. I'll speak to you soon.